Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. Delving into a, a topic that was at a request of a viewer, um, essentially to look at the uh, role of codependency in a narcissistic relationship. And how do they essentially get in, involved in that role and how to work through it? We'll realize that uh, codependency has a very innocent origin. It's when essentially one values another, is in love with another person, and uh, so much so that they put their needs, they put the other's wishes, dreams, desires, uh, really life in front of their own. Uh, it's the ultimate altruistic sacrifice where they give really all of themselves to another person. And oftentimes with such good intentions in mind, Good intentions meaning that they really want to help them, be supportive of them, and essentially turn around their life. So a codependent generally is in love with someone who has some issues going on with them. And the codependent, in essence, enters the relationship with almost like a Mother Teresa sort of syndrome, or what I call the Mother Teresa syndrome, where they really do want to help them, save them, um, and really be there, sort of the rock in their life, if you will. Be the, um, the, the rock, the, the one who will always be there, no matter what issues are going on in their life. They're there to support them. They're not there to judge. Um, oftentimes, they endure quite a bit um, with, uh, with the evolution of the relationship in terms of going without. Um, you know, going without uh, satisfaction satisfying of their own needs or edification of their own internal beings so really it's it's a it's an emptying out of oneself for the support in life of another and it's not necessarily a disease or disorder it's more a situation that is created in a dynamic um, with a narcissist so the narcissist will originally go through the love bombing and then really sweep uh, somebody off of their feet. And this is where that really beginning bond in that role is created. Um, however, realize that as the relationship progresses, the covert narcissist will realize that they've essentially got this other person wrapped around their, their finger. They've got them essentially at their beck and call. They've got them really um, in a sort of subservient role. In other words, yes, it's great to be there um, in the relationship, to be there at, at all costs for them because really your, your spouse is really your emergency guy or gal. Um, it's really someone who will be there for you in good times and bad, for better or for worse. Someone who will stay up late, you know, late um, hours into the night and be there for you until your fever breaks. Someone who will support you um, when you're going through crisis in your family. Someone who gets you above everybody else. So, you know, the, the codependency though really occurs when the, the needs of the codependent who is now becoming a really uh, what, what they call a supply, uh, someone who essentially is there to nourish and to fulfill all the various whims, wishes, dreams, and desires and needs of that person to really the, uh, the, the detriment of themselves. So there's usually a real sacrifice going. And yes, many relationships uh, require sacrifice or compromise, if you will, a giving up of oneself, um, a coming together where the both sides come together like, you know, two, and then they kind of, um, soften each other's edges and they become two merge as one and you know together two heads is better than one is essentially the feeling in a relationship so you should become stronger together however in a covert narcissist they can become uh, violent or ab abusive uh, there you know that's a, a, a definite uh, deterrent to the codependent and the codependent usually is, is still so enamored with this person that they're actually willing to, um, you know, 
withstand this abuse. They're, they they main, they maintain the relationship even in the presence of abuse, um, even in the presence of emotional pain, even in the presence of physical pain. The, the codependent will maintain that relationship intact, will be the super glue at all costs. So that's how dedicated and loyal a codependent is. In fact, that's one of the hallmark really, um, you know, traits of a codependent is that they stay in a relationship that's abusive, you know, way too long. Um, and they give way too much. Um, they, you know, and this then carries over into other areas of people's lives. They're underemployed. They're not receiving the income that they deserve. They don't have the self-esteem really within to pursue um, and take their career to the next level. So the, the codependency, in essence, um, is an experience of profound self-doubt or a lack of self-trust, which needs to be created really in coming um, and healing through this sort of relationship. So it's it's, it's coming to own and acknowledge one's truth, uh, uh, bringing an almost demanding an accountability um, from the others in one's life so that the abuse does not continue. It's, it's allowing to put the brakes on the relationship when there is uh, severe hurt, uh, violence, emotional abuse, neglect, and that trauma. It's, it's calling for a timeout. It's calling for a halt to the uh, chaos and the out of control behaviors because eventually um, people can become destroyed. Uh, families, homes, finances, uh, bankruptcy, things can just go rolling out of control and you can find yourself in legal trouble, um, emotional trouble, and really a little bit of prevention would go a long way um, if the codependent can really come to terms with and own that inner voice, that inner truth, and release that self-doubt, release the, uh, the the so critical side um, that you know one isn't good enough or one ha you know um, can't manage this on their on their own. Really, it's getting in touch with that internal autonomy, and really kind of taking the helm and taking their personal power to the next level, and making others accountable, uh, feeling that they deserve that. Not that they need it, that they deserve it. Deserving is much stronger um, as it resonates in the body and through all the DNA than need. So realizing what you deserve and what is really, you know, to be uh, coming to you and standing up for that and making sure that you receive that and get used to that receiving, that you actually deserve to receive the good in life and not just only give. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.